Hello everyone, today I wanted to go over something pretty simple. Doors and windows. So I've never, I've done these in videos before, but I've never straight covered them. So let's go ahead and get started with simple doors. So for doors, all you gotta do is create a folder, right click, create a blueprint, go to actors and name it door. I'm gonna name it door X, so that way it's a new door. So we drag it on in, let's double click it and let's find a good door mesh to add. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this door and we're gonna go into construction graph, uh, sorry, into event graph. With event graph, we need to right click and press type E space key. So we're gonna use the E key to open this door. So this allows us to make it to where when you press E, it goes through and runs this code. With the E key pressed, we wanna take the door by dragging it in from over there. So off the door, drag off and type in set relative location, I mean rotation. So relative rotation means instead of moving off the world, it moves off of this blueprint. So this area in here is what it moves off of. So with this set, we can right click the new rotation and click split struct pins. So now we've got X, Y, and Z. If you click a mesh, you have X, Y, and Z. So Z is the one we're wanting to edit. So what we want to do is drag off of pressed timeline. We want to add a timeline, name it rotation. We want to drag off the pressed and do flip flop. So flip flop makes it play forward and then backwards. So the first time it'll play forward and then the second time it'll reverse. So we could do update, connect to the rotation. We can double click into it, click track, add float track. A float track goes off of the numbers and is able to connect to float points. So the door is normally set at zero rotation. So we wanna right click, add keyframe, set the time to zero, set the value to zero. And then at the end, we want to set this, change the length, cause it's at five seconds now. We're gonna set it to three. We're gonna right click at the end, add keyframe, set the time to three, set the value to 90. Let's go with 80 actually. Now we've got both of our pins set. We got our 80 at three. Now we can go back to the event graph. So now our rotation is set. So now with this new track, we can drag over to the new rotation and we can hit compile. So when we load it, uh, we need to be able to make it to where the character can interact with the door. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to enable input and I'm going to hit add and do box collision. You can also use the line trace for this stuff as well, but I'm going to use box collision for now. And with the box collision, when you click it and in details, you could scroll down and you'll find these pluses. We want component begin overlap and we also want component end overlap. So with begin overlap, we can drag off of this enable input. We want to right click get player controller. And we want to drag this into player controller and we want to do disable input when the character ends overlap. So we need to target this as well. So this will allow the E key to be activated. So we need to go back to the viewport and find a good spot for this box to be. And this will allow the door to open in one direction. So with the box, we need to oh, make it wide enough for the player to be able to stand inside of very easily. And not have to get too unbearably close to it. So if we hit compile, now if we hit, pl we drop it in. Now let's rise it up to where it's sitting there. Now let's hit play. And now if I hit E, nothing happens. But when I walk over to it and I hit E, the door slides open. It takes three seconds exactly to open. I let that crease because it all depends on how you love the level setup. If there's a wall that's a little bit further over and it has plenty of room, you can raise it from 80 to 90 to 100 even. But yeah, if I hit E, it'll flip flock back to being closed. So that's the basic door. But what if I want it to work off of a key? So let's, let's right click, blueprint, actor, key. And then we're gonna duplicate our door. So that way we have door X are locked. 
So I'm going to go into the door X locked and I'm going to create a condition requirement. So I'm going to grab off of here. I'm going to right click branch. With the branch, I'm going to connect it to there and true to flip flop. All right. So in order to set this as a lock, we need to go to blueprints. We need to create this branch. We can go down to variables, click the drop, click plus, create a Boolean type, type in has, uh, you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna name it has key. Now that I have has key set, I am going to, so what you need to do is you need to load up your character blueprint. So I'm gonna go to my sandbox character I'm gonna have to recreate a node. So I have one named has key for a different one. So I'm gonna hit, click this, name it has key x. So with has key x as a variable in here as a function, I can click this little i right here. So from the doors locked, I need to set up that enable input everything that's down here. So from here, I need to drag off of here, type in cast to and box cbp sandbox character and connect that here so that enables the input and i need to drag off of here has key x so with has key x i can connect this to the branch what that does is it makes it to where if the player has key then it will be true and it'll go through to the flip flop and when i hit e it'll go through a then when i hit e again it'll go through b so I can open and close only if I have the key. I need to drag this off of here of other actor. Now I need to go to the key. So the new key, once I'm in here, I can create a, I can grab a key. So I'm gonna drop a key in there. So what this does is I can actually go to event graph. Then I can set another box. Or again, you can make it to where they use a line trace. So with this box, I need to wrap it around the key. That should actually be plenty of space. From here, I need to click the box and add in both of the event begin overlap and end overlap. All right, so both once again, enable, disable, and then we right click, get player controller. We drag this into both once again. So this will allow the key, the code to go through. So I could set E key again. I could have also copied this from the other blueprint and dragged off, drag off here, and I will do uh, cast to BP, uh, CBP sandbox character. So I can connect my event actor begin overlap, my other actor to the object. And then from here, I can drag off set has key X to check target is the cbp character and i can destroy actor that will delete the key inside of here so from here i can go to the door is locked and all things should be set up so now if i drop in the locked version and go over here hit e on this one it will open if i go hit e on this one nothing happens I go over and grab the key. Then I hit E on this and it opens. So that's how you do a simple open and close lock door. One thing you can do is if you have it set to the door locked and you have the branch, you can go off of the false and do a locked door noise that plays off of a audio cue. So that way players know, okay, so it's locked. So from there, we're gonna go off and head to Windows. So we're gonna actually collect the inputs over here from door X. It's pretty simple. So if I right click here, blueprint class, actor window, I go into the window. I then go to event graph and paste. So now I don't have to worry about getting that. Uh, I'm gonna have to delete both of these though. That's okay, so window A and B. We should be able to just drag these in. Oh, and C, there we go, A, B, and C. So now we've got a window to work with and we want this to be accessible from the inside. So we open this up wide. We once again, take the flip flop and key, E key. So we can go ahead and take 
almost this entire code pretty much, but we can skip the other code. So with the uh, window, we need it to be slightly different. So from here, then we click the box. We do both the pluses, E key, flip flop, timeline. Now instead, we drag the uh, window specifically. We grab the bottom one. So if we go to the event graph, we drag the bottom one in. We can drag off of here, set relative location this time. And we break the struct pin as well. We connect together, make the new track to the Z location because that is up and down. And from here we hit continue. Now what we need to do is we need to find out the good point of where it rises and falls. So from here it's zero, then it goes up to about 64. So we can copy this. Reason being, so now we want it to go back down to zero. So now we can go to the event graph, double click into timeline, keep the zero slot, click the second one, paste the value that you've collected into the value, compile. Now event graph, and there you go. As simple as that. Now we drag in our new window. And of course you could do the same code for the lock for this window. So now we come over here, we hit E. There we go, window opens and closes. It's as simple as that. And then you can use that same code for a moving platform and set up a event for it. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I know we've been over this, but I never had a dedicated video to it. So there we go. Now we have a dedicated video just to it. Hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a good day.